Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Herbert Marshall in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the nightmare world of a coward as we bring you Graham Greene's study in fear, The Man Within. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Hi, Hap, what's new? Why, the whole set, Harlow. Then your set, Hap, if you mean a brace of brand new ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are world famous for quality and performance. I got them, Harlow. Then you've got the best performers money can buy, Hap. Autolite spark plugs, both standard and resistor types, are available from thousands of dealers from coast to coast and used by millions of motorists everywhere. Yep. You see, my car wasn't operating just right. So your Autolite spark plug dealer checked and recommended a set of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, eh, Hap? Yes, sir, Harlow, and I'm sure glad he did. And you'll be glad, too, friends. See your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer soon. To locate him quickly, phone Western Union by number and ask for operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents The Man Within, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. After a while, after I lay there in the long grass, after the end to running for a while from death, night came, and with it, the fear. And later I said to myself, Who are you? And I answered, You are a hunted man, and you are going to die. Carlyne will find you, and he will kill you. Then I got up and I ran some more. Then there was a house. There was a wall around it of stone and separating the house from the woods. And there was a flame of candle on the ledge of one of the windows and I thought I saw inside a room a shadow move, then stay dark and motionless. It was a house and I was tired. It was a shelter and I was afraid. And outside here, somewhere, was Carl Iron. Get away. I'll kill you. Please. I wouldn't be afraid to do it. I've learned to use this gun. I want a hiding place. I'm being followed. You can't stop here. You'd better go the way you came. But I can't. They'd get me. Look here. I'm on the side of the law. It's not the officers who are after me. Oh, don't you see? Keep back. You can't stay here. Now turn around and go out. When I get you, I'll teach you charity. I told you to... I'll teach you. Now. Now I have it, miss. You see? It isn't loaded. No. No. Yes? But I wasn't going to kill you. I pointed it at the sky. You saw that. Yes. You're very frightened, aren't you? I don't want to die. Out there. A man named Carl Iron. <gasps> oh. It's too much. It's too much. He's my father. Dead in his coffin. He died this morning. I... I've never seen a dead man before. Like this. Face to face. Tomorrow morning the people will come. The villagers. And I will bury him. My father must be terribly alone now. And I am. You can stay if you like. There's no one I'll tell. It's just that I need to hide. There's a shed. That door there. And you can hide. Now listen to me. You are my brother, do you see? Tomorrow at the funeral, everyone will come here and they will see you. And you will tell them that you are my brother. All right. What, what, what shall I call you? Your name? Elizabeth. I am Andrews. And tomorrow when they ask, you heard of our father's illness. And you came back this morning after years in the city and watched him die. I don't know why. What? I don't know why I've helped you as much as I have. Afraid of me, that's why. It was not fear. To be a fool would be afraid of you. I suppose I was tired of being alone. (laughs) 
Then she led me to a shed where I was to sleep. And then she went away from me to some upstairs room of the cottage. And in an instant, I slept. Oh, he was a kindly man. And my awakening, a swiftly running current of voices. The villagers gathered to the funeral. An undertaker's man shutting the coffin lid casually as a man shuts a book. Then the nailing of it, with no air of finality. Then village men to carry it from the cottage, place it in a farm cart. And with dark Elizabeth beside me, Elizabeth, who was now sister to me, walk into a wall of white mist that melted before me, closed behind me. And our footsteps sounding no louder than the drip of misty rain that fell from trees and bushes along our road. Then reach the burying place, stand beside the dark Elizabeth in the misty graveyard, and be aware that yet, somewhere outside my mind, but ready to leap within the fear, the tempest of fear, the fear of Carlion. Oh, holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. mist opened a little, and I could see the fields. There was no car lion, and I stood alone, wanting to turn and run and put a wall of mist between me and that gathering of strangers. Loneliness and fear were like the emptiness of hunger. Only six steps away, and I would be lost to all the world in a blanket of white wool. But then, I would be lonely again. Take me away from here. Take me home, brother. Food. Have you any food? I haven't had any for 15 hours. There's tea and bread in the cupboard. I'll get it. Oh, that's good of you. There's no reason why I should shut you out. I've been alone. You're better than no one, even you. Uh, tea, bread, butter. Eat Andrews. The reason I came back with you... Fear. ...and something else, I'll tell you and you can laugh at me. I was homesick for here. I'm not making love to you. It wasn't you. It was just the place. I slept here, and I hadn't slept before for three days. Elizabeth. I was wondering. What? Why I like you. Of whom are you frightened? Elizabeth. Of whom are you frightened? Of death. And it is a man I know. A man named Carl Lyon. Of another man you are frightened. Carl Lyon, a man with a voice as near to music as any voice I've ever heard, except for yours. A man who... What's that? Oh, you're imagining things. Can't you whisper? Let go of me. Do you want to tell the whole world I'm here? There. Didn't you hear that? Into the shed, quick. The place where you slept. There's no door, you fool. Well, there are shadows and darkness. Find one to hide in you and your fear. Well? Forgive me. I'm completely lost in this park. Why didn't you knock? One can't be too careful around here. You're not alone. I'm alone. My brother's just gone out. He's not far. I can easily call to him if you don't go. You mustn't be afraid of me. Perhaps I know your brother. Is he a little over the middle height? Slightly built, dark, with frightened, obstinate eyes? That's not my brother. He's short and squat and, and very strong. Then I'm not looking for your brother. He must have been here very lately. His tea is hot. And he left in a hurry with his tea unfinished. Curious if we didn't meet. It's my cup you have. Will you allow me to finish it? I'm sorry I didn't meet your brother. There's another door. That's the shed, and there are only tools and withered plants. The man you described, the frightened, obstinate man. He's here? He slept here last night. And now? He went with the morning. North, I think. I don't know. He may return here, then. I don't think so. The frightened man who was here. A sort of Judas. 
He was afraid of you. He's an informer. And because of him, six men are in jail on a charge of murder. There was a fight. And a customs guard was shot, poor devil. This man, Andrews. Yes? He has spoiled everything. Three of us escaped. Harry Frawley, who is with me. And Andrews, the informer. He's made up us jailbirds and fugitives and murderers. The man killed because of smuggled casks of brandy. What a dull, dirty game he's made it all appear. And if you find him? I should talk with him. Make sure I was right. And then? What? I should kill him. He was laughing at me the whole time we were friends. I told him all the things I liked, shared what I loved with him. I can only make him forget what I told him by killing him. You say he went north? Yes. If he comes back, do not shelter him or warn him. Stay with peace. Stay alive. Andrews, he's gone. This knife. I would have killed him. And you, if you were told... You, you coward, coward, coward. What he said, is it true? Yes. Coward and informer. You heard him. He would kill me. You informed... And whatever your reason, you were driven to the side of the law. Well, stay there, go into the open, and bear witness against the men they've caught. Carlisle will kill me. Do you understand, do you? The touch of a coward is cold. I want to stay. I want to live. The coward's hand on my cheek, and it is cold. Elizabeth. Let go of me. The fog is gone. The sky is quite clear, and, and I can see six stars. Because I want you to love me. And you will go to town and bear witness, and testify at the trial. Tomorrow. A long walk to the town. You must sleep where you slept last night. Good night, Andrews. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Herbert Marshall in Graham Greene's The Man Within, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, uh, Hap, what type of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs did you get? Why, the resistor type, Harlow. To hear you tell it, the resistor is the greatest advance in spark plugs for automotive use in the past 20 years. My words exactly, Hap. That built-in Autolite resistor makes possible such outstanding advantages as double spark plug life, smoother engine performance, and quick starts. That's why I had them put in, Harlow. And it turns out you're right, and they're super right. And the Autolite resistor spark plug is only one of a complete line of world-famous Autolite spark plugs, ignition engineered for every use. So, friends, visit your nearest Autolite spark plug dealer for a spark plug checkup soon. To quickly locate him, just phone Western Union by number and ask for operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage production of The Man Within, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. And uh, bring up more whiskey for the lad. Well, I'd rather have food. Whiskey, whiskey for the appetite. Ah. Now, Mr. Andrews, I must tell you, you're a very brave man. No, no, I'm not. A coward. She said so. Oh, who said such a ridiculous thing? Nobody. It doesn't matter. It's in the viewpoint. To me, you are brave to come here to my rooms as you did. Because she told me to come. It seems... Yeah? It seems that it is necessary I change somehow so that she can love me. To be a man. I see. I'll do my best for you. I've taken a room for you here at the inn. But I won't go back to her. You understand that? Uh. If she will love you now, then why? The fear. Carl Iron is not caught. He will find me. After tomorrow, I must get away. You will have the whole of England to drop into. 
But I must tell you this. What? Forget smuggling when this is over. Act honestly in the future. Don't prate to me. Don't talk to me of honesty. You're not risking your life at this trial as I am. And don't you be impertinent. You're doing this to save your own skin, else you'd stand trial tomorrow like the rest. Ah, drink your whiskey. Go to bed. My name is Francis Andrews. Sorry, Informo. Order. Order in the court. Where were you on the night of February 10th? On board the ship, good chance. Uh, what were you doing there? I was engaged in smuggling. We were to run a cargo that night, so as not to pay the duty. Tell the court what happened that night. I helped load the dinghy with the casts of brandy, then I got in with them and helped row to shore. When they began to unload the cargo, I slipped away. There was no moon. It was very dark, and they did not see me. They didn't see me go. I got away among the dunes and hid. Then I ran again. To where? To a house on the moors that I found there. To a girl who was in it. Elizabeth. Uh, tell us about the letter, Mr. Andrews. Two days before, I had sent an anonymous letter to the officer in charge, stating the time and the exact place and who... As judge of this court, order, order. <laughs> Another question, Mr. Andrews. How long have you been in your uh, profession? Three years. And you hated what you were doing? Yes. Why didn't you leave then? I had nowhere to go and no money. Did it ever occur to you to work honestly? No. Why did you first join? Friendship for a man. A man who you're not caught. Carl Iron. Oh, the man friend of these others in the dark who you betrayed. Yes. Uh, then what were your motives for laying information with the revenue? The men hated me, all of them. Except Carl Iron. Oh, go on. And I was afraid of being hurt, and I hated the sea and the noise and the danger. And I wanted to show these men that I was someone to be considered, that I had the power to smash all their plans. And your friend Carl Iron, uh, did you do nothing to warn him? It was a case of him or me. Uh, that, that is all, Mr. Andrews. Will the defense cross-examine? No? You may step down, Mr. Andrews. You may continue, Sir Henry. I call the prisoner Jason Collier. So he was called, Jason Collier, and sworn in. He refused to talk, as did the two who came after him. Instead, they looked at me, and each in his turn smiled. Smiled. I could not understand why. And the courtroom became very hot, the faces blobs, and time became drone of voices, and but accused and denied, accused again, ebbed. They were found guilty. Then through streets filled with jeering, an officer to escort me. Through succession of back doors and dirty lanes, through stables, then the white heart and the room I had in it. Light its darkness with candle and in the floating wisps of its rays, an image, in mirror, an image, informer, brave, courageous informer. And the mirror shadow, coward, coward, still coward, fear-ridden man, fear-sick man, because Carl Lyon was free, Carl Lyon alive. In Carl Lyon's hands, still my death, coward, and no love from Elizabeth for a coward. Room, candle dancing with fear, shadow drifting with fear. Andrews. So there you are. Harry, uh, Harry Frawley. Knife says stay where you are unless you want to squeak to a new tune. There are offices in this hotel. What do you want, Harry? Why do you want to quarrel? I'm here to do you a service straight, I am. Get out. You ain't very grateful. Don't you want to hear my news? What news? You shouldn't have squealed. Not on the others. It was like your mother, you might say, when we used to see and see storms and things made you whisper, whimper like a pudent baby. You were a squeaker, you were. You said you had news. Of Kalayan. 
I've finished with him. Ah. <laughs> but he ain't finished with you. Look, don't interrupt, Squeaker. Now I've got the roll of it. It's like this. Carlion ain't finished with you. Nor with your ladybird. What do you mean? Your ladybird. The one of the cottage in the mists. Her. What do you call her? Elizabeth. Ah. Elizabeth. Pity. To shelter a squeaker and then to die. Pity, pity. Carl Iron wouldn't do anything to her. I know he wouldn't. He'll be off to give it to her tomorrow or the next day. You're lying. It's a trap to get me to go back to her so Carl Iron will catch me. But I won't. I won't go back, I tell you. A lion that as soon kill you as look at you. But he says killing's too good for you. He says you ought to have some fun with you first. He says, Elizabeth. Tell him I'll not go back. Tell him it's no use laying that trap for me. Good. I've brought you Carlion's news and we're quits. Ta ta, squeaker. <laughs> And silence now, and again alone. And the coward's image to reach from mirror, offer its embrace. It's only a whisper, only a trap. Why such a trap for a coward who's only repelled by danger? Carl Lyon would not kill a woman. Carl Lyon. Snuff a candle and his images, leave the hotel, walk with no fear of death but a terror of life. Without escape, without will, walk and reached the downs as the first orange glow lifted above the eastern horizon. Then run to stifle thought, run fast until there's no more breath, only the flinging down again upon salt tufts of grass and cool and silver sky touched now with green. Up and run again. Then the house and the wall around it and an opening door and Elizabeth. You at last. I've come back. Oh, yes, I can see that. I get you tea. From that cup. That was the cup we both drank from. Not that one. I remember the one. It had a chip out of the rim. This one. Come. Bread, tea, here. Oh, tell me, what are you doing here? Has anything happened since I've been away? No, nothing ever happens here. The door was unbolted. Do you think that's safe? It was unbolted when you first came. I didn't want a less warm welcome for you when you came back. You knew I would come back. We are friends. You will laugh at me. You despise me. You know that I'm a coward. I betrayed you. How have you betrayed me? It came out in court that you sheltered me. In court? Were you there? I betrayed you. I told them you sheltered me. And now Carl Lyon means to punish you for it. He'll be here today or tomorrow with me, and I have no fear. He will kill you and me. No. Fool, go from here, go away. I love you and I will stay here in this house where you came to me. Do you hear? I love you. Elizabeth. Oh, why were you so long? I was afraid. Am I worse than death? You're not afraid of that. I don't fear it any longer. You are filling me with yourself. That means courage, peace, holiness. Oh, love me. So long alone. Oh, love me. Andrews. Yes, what? What? What is it? Have you seen something? Oh, nothing. Only I remembered. We shall need water before tonight. We must go with a pail now before it's dangerous. To the well. The pail's in the corner there. What a time to remember. Huh. My knife, take it. Half minute's walk, no more. The path behind the trees. Half a minute and no more. The knife, take it. Yes. Now kiss me. A farewell for a half minute's absence. I kiss you when I come back. Go now, now. She's dead, Andrews. She meant the knife for me. She came for me and she stumbled, fell to the floor, and the knife pierced her. I'm sorry. Intensely, deeply sorry. 
She was fine. Finer than you or I. She knew you were here. And she sent me away. I wanted you, Andrews. Not her. Not the death of that lovely girl. You. Not her. With my knife. <laughs> you will kill me, Andrews. <laughs> you, the coward. You who brought death to what you loved. Because of her. Of Elizabeth. No more, Carlyle. <laughs> There is peace now, and a kind of happiness. Carlion is dead. Carlion is dead of the wounding of my knife. The knife that had tasted of Elizabeth. Carlion dead, and I killed him, and I am free. And the coward who whimpered in the darknesses of fear is a man who waits for the coming of the police, who waits in a cottage where fear is dead and where love lies dead. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, we proudly present the first radio dramatization of William Shakespeare's tragic history of love and death, Othello. Our stars, Kathy Lewis, Richard Widmark, and Elliot Lewis. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Graham Greene's The Man Within was adapted for suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. In tonight's story, Betty Harford was heard as Elizabeth. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright, Joseph Kearns, Raymond Lawrence, Richard Peel, and Bill Bissell. You can buy Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts, and Autolite staple batteries at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>